I really appreciate being asked to uh, give this talk uh, to with Anthony. And, you know, I've been working in soil health since the 90s when we used to call it soil quality. But I think whether we call it soil quality or soil health, uh, you know, manure goes from being a problem that could cause environmental issues to being really key to management through depending on your practices. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about soil health and how we get there, and then a bit about manure. Uh, so this uh, here, um, bottom left, uh, I think is really a really key take home from this presentation. And it's not so much the equipment of the manure spreader as the spreading on green. So more about that in a few. So soil health, what do we think about when you have a really sandy soil? So growers that are coping with that really gritty, coarsely, uh, really well-drained soils, we know that if they can increase their organic matter, they can improve water holding capacity and nutrients. So you can, if they're irrigating, they won't have to irrigate as often. If they're rain fed, more and more we're coping with these uh, really intense rainfall events less often. So amending a soil, sandy soil by building organic matter is key. I think most people would agree with that. But the really interesting thing is what if you have a clay soil, something that's really slippery and gives you a ball or even uh, a ribbon. So often we see flooding. So you have too much water holding capacity, right? You get ponding and very few crops except for rice uh, do well when in a flooded situation. They all need that oxygen. And some are very sensitive. Well, again, the funny thing is it's organic matter. If we can build organic matter, we get better tilth, more pores, and we get better aeration. So amending a sandy or a two clay soil, both cases, it's about building organic matter. So this is really the foundation for soil health as well, because this is the home or the habitat for microbes. We talk about We'd like to see, you know, different types of diverse microbial uh, organisms. But in fact, if they don't have the home and the food that's provided by the organic matter shown here in the middle of this aggregate, this is a classic microscopy slide that really, I think, sums it up. You have your aggregate sandwiching your organic matter. If we can do that, we can really uh, keep organic matter stable. However we've built it, we can keep that. So keep that in mind as we talk about ways to build it. So even though we're talking about manure, um, I always come back to roots. These two go together. And if you've ever dug up some uh, a rye, oats, small grains crop, or even grass in your own front yard, you'll notice how roots are really the roots of grasses have these little aggregates uh, sticking to them. So through the mycorrhizae and the root hairs, they are building little aggregates through their root system. And then these are protecting whatever organic matter that we get. So it sticks together sand grains and really builds that organic matter and stabilizes it. And again, it's a home for for microorganisms that we're looking for to help mineralize nutrients and build organic matter. So one of the basic questions, and this really came up about five years ago and even a little earlier when corn prices went through the roof. Unfortunately, we're not there anymore. But is it quantity of residues? So you have, you know, corn produces a lot of residues. Or is it quality? Do you have, can you just, I've tried to show this here with having more residues shown by straw, does that make more organic matter or is it quality matter? So think about your own experience. We know that if you have soybeans, for example, you have residues on the top of a field, they quickly disappear. But that's the, that's the leaves. What about the root? Maybe legume roots are sticking around, grass roots is giving us those aggregates. So maybe it's not as simple as what you goes in equals what comes out because how much of it's retained, it becomes organic matter is what really matters, not just the total amount. So in fact, although quantity matters, I think we should be focusing more on quality. 
So here I've shown some cover crops, a little mixture with some legumes in it, uh, a little bit of grasses, so that can give us a whole one type of organic materials. And then here we have just a simple rye cover crop in between corn residues, two types of residues because they're both grasses, but the rye is giving us really deep root systems and it's also a lot of lush green material if we turn it in or no-till into it early in the season. So those are two examples. And then back to this example of manure put on green, something living. So manure is a kind of form of residue, a quality residue, right? Because it's partly decomposed and digested already um, in an animal's gut. So we've already kind of on the way to making a really nice high quality mixture. So this comes back to, I think this kind of illustrates well what soil microbiologists tell us, and I've taught soil biology, um, and perhaps a little bit simplistic, but think about it this way. So when sweet corn first comes in, everyone is excited. I'm thrilled, right? Because it's really important. I just love my sweet corn. So, but I can't just live on it, right? Because there's a certain type of sugars that are really tasty, but they're probably in my gut supporting one type of microbes, or more than one, but conceptually you can think of those set of sugars in, sugar, in sweet corn are gonna promote certain type of microbes that digest those. But if I have a diverse plate that has got sweet corn, but it has other rice, beans, other types of um, fruits and vegetables and grains and meat, that provides support for very different types of microorganisms. So it means different like fungi that break down more recalcitrant residues, plus uh, things that eat really available residues. So basically diverse quality builds quality diversity in microorganisms and that helps us get all the different services we want from soil health. So it boils down to what we often talk to growers about which is increase inputs by diversifying rotations in growing cover crops and adding manure or compost. We also want to reduce losses, which I won't talk as much here, but it's interesting residues show up again because if we have types of residues that are slow to degrade that have this mixture of qualities, that also, and then of course we need to prevent erosion. Those are just good practices. That's how we build organic matter, basically. So, a real challenge is that we want to, on the one hand, um, release nitrogen, and that releases carbon at the same time. But after all, we're trying to sequester some of that carbon. We're trying to fix it into those little sandwiches of aggregates. So we don't want to release excess carbon. So some of it we want to capture. And that's how we build soil health. So this is this kind of contradiction that we need to release some nitrogen, which will release some carbon, but we also need to um, build organic matter. So how can we address that? Well, replenishing carbon plus nitrogen. So we used to talk about managing nitrogen through the four R's, and that's good, right time, right place. But we also need, uh, I think, a fifth, and that's carbon, to, to think about how we manage nitrogen through carbon. So, of course, with tillage, we have to avoid um, ex excess and non-judicious tillage. We don't want to till ourselves into a problem because it's hard to till your way out of a problem. You avoid inversion, which is you know gonna put your residues really deep with too much, um, not much anaerobic conditions under there. We wanna avoid wet clay soil conditions whenever possible, sometimes difficult in the spring. And instead we wanna fracture um, using chisel. And as my colleague, Tim Harrigan, an ag uh, engineer says, you can't till your way out of things, so you let roots till for you. So coming back to roots again, you'll notice a theme in my talk about manure is also about roots. So let's get to manure. There's some nice classic work by Brody and others showing that manure gives us a lot of uh, nutrients. So we should always calculate that because we want to make sure to reduce our fertilizer to take into account the nutrients we've put on. Um, and that it, the animal matters. Also what we feed them matters, just like feeding us sweet corn, feeding um, broilers, uh, grain versus um, dairy gets more alfalfa. So it depends what you feed them and what you bed an animal with. Poultry, such as broilers or egg layers, is quite classically 
high in nitrogen, but don't forget it has a lot of phosphorus, which can get us into trouble. We need to prevent erosion at all costs in where we use poultry manure. And um, if we can wait longer, we don't need a high nitrogen kick, then dairy, even manure slurry is a, is a bit safer way to go because it slowly builds that carbon with the nitrogen without high phosphorus. So here's a bit more about manure quality, including some, so I did from an analysis of the literature some years ago in my lab, and it's in some of my extension bulletins, uh, which I'll show you at the end. So carbon to nitrogen in plants um, really depends on how much nitrogen's there, because the carbon's always about 46%. You can see how in manure, it really matters. So types like beef cattle manure, dairy manure, you tend to have a lot more carbon. And it, again, is a low quality, so-called, but really building quality in the long term. By low quality, we just mean that it doesn't have a lot of nitrogen, doesn't give you a, a big nitrogen response in the first year, but it does build your uh, organic matter. So that's really important. And Again, let's talk about different ways that we can apply manure with roots uh, because that's one of the best ways to keep our nitrogen and um, manure in place. So this work by Tim Harrigan, uh, it shows us how we can actually apply seeds, cover crop seeds, right in with manure. So this is a slurry manure and it's injected in, in a no-till system. And it sounds a little controversial, but instead of just uh, injecting into residues, which is, or grass, which is a good idea, you can also pour cover crop seed right into it. So what this looks like is you first pour in the cover crop seed. Some of those seeds don't germinate because they're right next to the manure. Um, they're injected in the soil there. Then this cover crop happens to be a brassica, but you could do this with rye and other cover crops. And finally, the few brassica that survive, they do really well. They're right next to the manure. And you think about it, many pasture and cover crop seeds do well with manure because they evolved in a situation where there was also often animal manure next to them, right? So they know how to take a lot of nutrients up and thrive. So it's somewhat counterintuitive, but it actually is a really good system. You might try and see if you can make work in your system. The more classic way is to spread manure such as this dairy compost right on a grassy fallow or on a cover crop. And I just wanna remind you that even just a dusting, two tons per acre, which doesn't look like much, can actually build organic matter. Sometimes uh, we're trying to get rid of a large amounts, but if you are buying it or bringing it on or trying to spread it in far parts of the farms, then even a small amount makes a big difference. And we have some evidence from some long-term experiments at Michigan State. And so that's the key final thing I'm gonna leave you here with. So this is what we call a living field lab. It's basically a long-term trial that at the Kellogg Biological Station in Southwest Michigan. So on a very coarse, well-drained soil. Uh, it started at around one and a half percent organic matter. And Dr. Harwood started this trial and he was told you can't build organic matter because it's really coarse and with tillage, you're just not gonna be able to build it. And yet, over time, with or without a cover crop, you can see that he, he was able to. Just a rotation, corn, soybean, wheat, versus continuous corn, shown there in the green. Um, the continuous corn stated about 1.5%, but rotations, so compost alone did some benefit, rotations, and the best thing was a rotation plus a cover crop and compost. So what's happening here is you're getting a synergy you're getting a win-win. If you add that fine every other year, two tons per acre in this case, you get a really good cover crop catch and it grows well. And so your cover crop's growing bigger, more roots, and your compost directly is improving soils. So on the weedy fallow side of the plots, we can see how the organic and compost systems were, were best. But once you have that cover crop there, they're all pretty good but particularly if compost is there. So win-win, cover crops plus compost. And generally, this does hold manure in place, keeps it, reduces erosion, and then those roots can help support microbes that then, again, can help sequester or tie up 
and build organic matter. So take home. We want to mix browns, things like compost, dairy manure, even wheat straw, roots with greens, things like legume hay, legume cover crops, or even a rye cover crop, if, which we can almost everyone can plant because it grows even if it's November when it's planted, as long as it's turned in green or um, burned down when it's green, then it really can support the browns turning into organic matter. Otherwise, we, you need to have this to build those microbes. They need a little bit of sugar energy, which comes from the legumes and the young cover crops, or from swine manure, and then you build with the browns. Obviously, judicious tillage, roots of every sort and size, and clearly best management practices. If at all possible, try to apply your manure with greens, or you could try fitting in cover crop seed directly with the manure and see what you could make work on that. So take home is we need to follow good management practices and if possible, apply manure with green. And you really will see increases in soil health in most soil types. As I started off, sandy or clay, this can give you some benefits over the long term. And once you've built that organic matter, really trust that because that you can rely on that to give you a little bit of an ore nitrogen each year and better management of water. Thanks very much for this opportunity and I'll look forward to uh, questions at the end. There's a number of resources on the Michigan State University Extension website such as this one on more advanced soil organic matter. We also have one on pertuber crops we have and soil health and then some other recent ones for organic um, farmers. So there's a bunch of resources there that I hope you find helpful.